Layla. Welcome to Raid Lore Stories. Today's Lore Stories is going to be for our man's The Magnificent. Our man's is the brand new Fragment Fusion champ. Also happens to be the five year anniversary champ. He's got some fun animations, right? So there's a couple things I noticed right off the bat with him is he does look like Captain Jack Sparrow, right? But also looking at the game, I think is that Ultimate Death Knight Arbiter and Ragash with it saying Shadow here. I don't know. I'm really curious if his lore story is going to kind of like talk about this. So let's check out his story together. Armand's the Magnificent, a mortal master of ceremonies of Telerius' festival of creation, could be the most famous and talented troubadour in Telerius history. Though devotees of the great dwarf bard Fodbar might disagree, Armand's himself will say so if given half a chance. His stock of story songs, wisdom, and wit is seemingly endless. His nimble fingers can perform feats of sleight of hand with the same grace that they move across the fretboard of his lute, and when his sword is in those quick hands, a song of blood is sure to follow. To hear him tell it, there is no exotic locale that he has not visited, no beauty he has not pursued, no pompous fob he has not embarrassed. He has learned his skills and honed his crafts all over the world as a poet, a jeweler, a pirate, a baker, a thief, and anything else a questioner may think to ask. He is a man who has been everywhere, yet comes from nowhere, admired by many, but a true friend only to a rare few. Part of our man's mystique comes from his impeccable style, inspired by dozens of cultures across Talera, but unique to himself. Laden with rings, bracelets, and necklaces, he dazzles with bold and brightly colored garb and a bandana binding his bejeweled braids. His love of luxury and beauty does not transgress into vanity or greed. His wealth is part of the majesty of his performance, displayed to delight the masses, not himself. He readily displays his tattooed skin, making his whole body part of a work of art that is his life. The two most prominent are of the Arbiter and the undead caricature of Death Knight. The stodgy pious, many of whom already dislike noise and frivolity to begin with, sometimes condemn it. But our man has a ready explanation. He immortalized the Death Knight on his flesh alongside the Holy Arbiter because the balance of light and dark is inherent to all living things. This is something our man has marked well during his long journeys and many encounters, whether singing ruckus drinking songs with the dwarves, engaging in feats of strength with orcs, or dining with elven nobles. It is natural for an entertainer to appear on days of celebration, but the festival in its purest form is by the unity of light and dark, which is what our man's tattoos symbolize. One cannot exist without the other, and nor can Talera exist without either. So too for grief and joy, love and loss. Though our man's has great exuberance, he has also seen great sorrow, just as Talera itself has witnessed days of glory and days of strife. For our man's is a witness of Talera and a teller of its tales, at one with the land and its many people. For all his jollity, our man's is skilled in the battle arts and war magics of a hundred traditions from across the world, and will fight with steely resolve if tested. He trains stridently, for he serves a high cause. The Arbiter is not just a muse, but his direct mistress, and she has given up a shard to preserve his eternal essence. Our man's does not merely earn his coin performing during the Festival of Creation. He is a spiritual steward of the festival and charged by the Arbiter to maintain his traditions. For a month before and after the festival, this eternal bard walks the world. When our man ventures forth, he gathers a coterie of like-minded celebrants, dancers, singers, storytellers, fools, sages, seers, and scouts from across the spectrum of Talaria's people are drawn to him, honored and excited at the thought of performing by his side. They form a caravan that wends across the land, its progress track from village to village with growing anticipation and glee. Where they stop, our man's band unpacks and constructs their own stages and stalls. They offer everything from visions conjured within a crystal orb to barter in books and used clothes, along with virtuoso performances. The finale of our man's visits is always a splendid miracle play depicting Telerian cosmogony and the dances of creation, that the folk of the world are reminded that the festival of creation is more than just a period of mindless merrymaking. And then, in a flash, he is off to his next destination, leaving behind those he has entertained. Then, he returns to slumber within his shard. This cycle leaves our man in a strange, perpetual state of simultaneous detachment and attachment to society and the mortal world. Our man makes a friendly impression on everyone, but, though few realize it, 
He keeps them all at an emotional distance, for always must the show go on, and with our mans, onward to a new stage. Okay, I like this story, guys. This was fun. I feel like they did a really good job fleshing it out. And they answered that question of why he has Death Knight, Ultimate Death Knight, and Arbiter on his chest. Is he talks about it being light and dark and how, you know, the world cannot exist without those two. Kind of like a yin and yang kind of thing, right? I thought they did a really good job with this story, guys. I'd love to know what you think for the lore story for our mans. Drop me a comment down below and thanks for watching.